the reason the Green Revolution is, is so important today is that the challenge of agriculture is to increase the productivity of agriculture. It's to increase the amount of food and crops that we can grow per unit of per person who's working there. And the only way you can do that is by improving the technology. It's by coming up with more efficient ways to grow crops, the way the first Green Revolution did for wheat uh, in, uh, in, in Asia. Now, the problem is that we're in a, now in a situation where um, uh, uh, climate change is affecting even the way we can grow crops at given current technology. So we need to race even faster to get to uh, new technologies, not just for the usual problems of uh, agricultural productivity, but there is a danger lur lurking ahead, particularly for people living in the tropical areas in sub-Saharan Africa and, and Asia. All technological changes uh, will only work if there are behavioral changes. Uh, if you give farmers, as we learned uh, earlier on, you make fertilizer available to farmers, not all farmers will use it because they're not sure it's going to work, they don't know, they're not familiar with it, and, and so on. So there's no question that the new Green Revolution is going to require behavioral changes just, just as much as the old Green Revolution did. Uh, but I don't think necessarily that countries need to commit to behavioral change. You can't manipulate how people behave, right? What we, have, what we can do is first understand what is it that's going to take farmers to adopt a new technology? What is it going to take uh, women, for instance, to use a technology that may have been designed by men? Uh, and then uh, adapt it, and then pr and provide the incentives for people to, to adopt it. The, the real contribution of a conference like this is to provide the evidence base for informed policymaking. There's too much policy making and too much debate out there that is pure rhetoric. And people come in with ideological positions and they just take decisions. What this, th this conference and what GDN does and all its partner organizations do is to provide the evidence out there. So policymakers, even if they're going to make a decision based on ideological grounds, they know that there's some research out there that contradicts what they're saying. And at least they're aware of it. And the fact that people can talk about this openly and that policymakers like the ones visit, uh, uh, attending this conference are aware that there is this material out there will lead to better decisions and better outcomes for our people.